Hello, everyone. You're once more welcome to your science world. Today, we shall be doing a full IGCSE paper, chemistry, February, paper two to the year 2023. Of course, uh, that's your extended paper. Now, let's just go straight to the questions because we need to take, uh, I think, 45 minutes to do this paper, the multiple choice paper. So the first question reads, substance M is a solid at 30 degrees centigrade. So we need to take note on a solid at 30 degrees centigrade. This is, the substance is heated to 80 degrees Celsius and its temperature measured as it cools down to room temperature. The cooling curve is shown. Between which times is substance M freezing? Now you need to just count your graph and where you have 30, you can draw a straight line. It should be straight, please. Now you know that this is, this is your solid here. You told that at 30 degrees, centigrade is a solid. So the solid is cooling, this is a cooling curve. And up here should be the liquid cooling. Now, if this is a liquid and here is a solid, then the stationary or the plateau phase tells you that your liquid is changing to your solid. And the state at which liquid changes to solid is called freezing. So the time the substance is freezing should be B, Q to R. Is that okay? Question two, which gas has the fastest rate of diffusion? Which gas, all you need to do is get the MR. And if you go to your periodic table, you will see that M, the MR of uh, the MR or the relative molecular mass of argon should be 40. Or the relative atomic mass, you can take it out of yeah, relative atomic mass. Good. So it should be 40. But since this is a compound, we can call it the relative molecular mass, right? So for carbon it should be 12, and you have two atoms of carbon times two plus hydrogen is one, six atoms of hydrogen times six. And that gives you, this is 24 plus six, giving you 30. Hydrogen chloride, one plus 35.5, that's 36.5. And uh, your hydrogen cyanide should give you one times two due to two atoms of hydrogen plus 32, the atomic mass of sulfur is 32. So all that gives you 34. And you are asked the fastest rate of diffusion, the gas with the fastest rate of diffusion, that gas should have the lightest mass or the smallest mass. And the gas there with the smallest mass should be your 18, which is the value 30. Question three, there are two isotopes of bromine. The mass number of isotope one is 79, and the mass number of isotope two is 81. Take note, mass number for isotopes, what are isotopes? Atoms of the same element. Atoms of the same element. Okay, wait with same proton number and of course they should have what they should have the same electron number of electrons but different neutron number different neutron number or different number of neutrons, let's see. Those are isotopes. So which statement is correct? The isotopes have the same number of neutrons. 
definitely not true. The isotopes have different chemical properties. They should have the same chemical properties. Reason because they have the same number of electrons. They have the same number of valence electrons, to be precise. Right? So that tells you that they should have the same chemical properties. The isotopes have different numbers of protons. No, they have the same number of protons, same number of protons. And if they have different number of protons, then they should be, they shouldn't be the same element. Okay. Remember, the protons identifies the atom. The elements have the same number of outer electrons. Very true. We always say same number of electrons and same number of valence electrons. So this should be the right answer. Thank you. Next question, which statement about ions, ions and ionic bonds is correct? Bromine atoms form negatively charged bromide ions. That's very true. Remember, bromine is a non-metal. They likely gain electrons since they have more electrons in the outer shell. So you could have bromide there, that's a bromine atom, for example, it's gonna gain an electron to give you a bromide ion. That's a half equation. So they, they, they generally form what? Negatively charged ions. So A is correct. Let's look at B, why B is wrong. Ionic bonds form between elements in group seven, no. That's not true. Group seven simply means they have seven valence electrons. Seven electrons in their outermost shell. So they likely gain electrons. Okay. Or uh, actually, not actually they likely gain. Uh, they share electrons. They share electrons because chlorine. Good, something like this. Yeah. So within the atoms in the periodic table or within the atoms in group seven, they're going to share electrons. Okay, so they share electrons up in the octet state. But with uh, within metal, then that is where you can have ionic bonds with the group seven elements. But the question says between elements in the group seven, between elements in the group seven. So, for example, like... Uh, Chlorine, chlorine, or chlorine, iodine, you're gonna find, you're going to find uh, your covalent bonds. So this, they, they, they're going to share what these electrons, of course, from your covalent bonds. Positive ions are formed when atoms lose protons. No, they lose electrons, please. So when they lose electrons, you have a positive ions. Potassium iodide contains negatively charged potassium ions if this is potassium iodide this is the metal and this is a non-metal so it's generally what the potassium usually loses electrons to become k plus and the iodide gains electrons to become so it is the iodide ions not the potassium ions it is the iodide ions please so a is the best choice which we will say so Question five, part of the periodic table is shown. Which type of chemical bonding is present in the oxide? If this, this is, these are sections of metals. So oxide of F should be ionic. And since these are the non-metals, sorry. Here are the no metals. So the oxide here should be covalent. The oxide here should be covalent. So oxide of F should be, oh, this is a wrong, ionic, ionic, covalent, not ionic, C should be the best choice. Next question. Elements X and Y react to form a compound. Element X loses two electrons and element Y gains one electron. So if X loses two electrons, it becomes two plus, Y gains an electron, it becomes Y negative. 
what is the charge on the ions of elements X and Y? We've already said so, plus two and negative. And what is the formula? To get the formula, you now need to assume the charge is to be the valency, two and one. You swap their valencies. So y takes two, so you have x, y, two. So which are correct? Element charge on x should be this and this. Same, same. This is not correct. This is correct. So all these are wrong. So b is the best choice. We now move to the next. Question seven. Which statement about graphite explains why it is used as an electrode? For a substance to be qualified as an electrode, it should be in it. It should be in it and it should be able to conduct electricity. Conduct electricity. It contains ions, no. It's a giant covalent structure, no. It's a metal. We can't take metal because most metals are reactive. Okay, most metals react with the components of the electrolyte. It has mobile electrons, very true. Mobile electrons is qualifies what conducts electricity. Methane burns in air to form carbon dioxide and water. What is the balanced chemical equation? I, I just need to do my methane here. Plus this gives you carbon dioxide plus water. Then I try to balance it myself. One carbon, one carbon, carbon is balanced. Four hydrogen, two hydrogen. I can put, let me change my color. I can put two there. Now you have two oxygen and two, four oxygens. So I need to put two here to become four. Oxygen on my left hand side. Is that okay? All right, so I can cross check again. One carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, four oxygen, two plus two. So what's my best choice? A, we have, there's no two here. So that's makes it wrong. B, there's two here and there's two here, so I can take that. C, there's two here, there's no two here, so here is wrong, and here is also wrong. Question nine, let's see. Question nine. The equation for the thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate is shown. The MR of sodium hydrogen carbonate is 84. And that for sodium carbonate is 106. In an experiment, 2.1 gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated, but not all of it decomposes. All of the carbon dioxide is collected and measured at room temperature and pressure. The total volume of carbon dioxide produced is 0.21 TNQ. The volume of one mole of a gas at room temperature and pressure is 24 TNQ. Which statement is correct? The mass of sodium carbon uh, the mass of sodium carbonate produced is 0 0.93 grams. The mass of sodium carbonate. Now we can from this multiple choice question, we can try and get the mass, try and get the mass of sodium carbonate. And for us to get the mass of sodium carbonate, I will not advise you to use 2.1 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. I'm not going to advise you because we're told that uh, not all of it decomposes. Okay, not all of it decomposes. So I'll just go straight to my carbon dioxide. I'll just go to my carbon dioxide because I know all of the volume of carbon dioxide was produced. Okay. So let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, zero point. We have if we we have sodium. Let's put our carbon dioxide here and sodium carbonate here. Good. So we say that 24 dm cube gives you uh, 
was the molar mass 106 grams of sodium carbonate. So 0 0.21 dm cube should give you a certain x, where x will be 0 0.21 times 106 divided by 106 divided by 24. So that should give you, I'm going to use my calculator, please. Oh. Okay, here's my calculator. So it's my calculator. So I have 0 0.21 times 106 divided by 24. So I have this value. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, sorry about that. So I have 0 0.9275 grams, approximately equal to 0 0.93 grams. That's it. So my best choice there is A. You can also use, you could also use Try and use 106, but now let's use 106, for example. If I use 106, giving you 10, oh, oh, sorry. If I use the mass of, now I'm trying to use the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So using the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate, 84, giving you. 106, this is sodium hydrogen carbonate here and sodium carbonate. So 2.1 grams should give you 2.1 times 106 divided by 84. So let's see, 2.1 times 106 divides 84. So you see, I'm going to have, I'm going to have 2.2, 2, 2.65 grams. So that's not, that's not very good. That's not very good. Okay. Yeah. So the best way to do this problem is to use the mass of, to use the volume of what carbon dioxide since all of it is produced. Thank you. An electrolysis experiment is done using carbon electrodes. Hydrogen and oxygen are formed at the electrodes. What is the electrolyte? Okay. So what is electrolyte? Now, all we need to do here is, uh, you need to put a cathode here. So the cathode is negatively charged and the anode. And we need to know what is actually discharged, all right? What is actually discharged? So what are the electrolytes in copper two sulfate, aqueous copper two sulfate? You have copper two plus, copper two plus and uh, sulfate, two minus versus water, which is hydrogen plus, OH minus. Now, are the cathodes, are the cathode will be discharged, copper will be discharged because it's less reactive than hydrogen. It's less reactive than hydrogen, so copper will be discharged. The sulfate and the hydroxide are the anodes. Your hydroxide will be discharged and oxygen gas will be given off. So you see, A is already wrong. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, so you have hydrogen ion and the chloride. Take note, the chloride is concentrated versus so at the cathode, your hydrogen gas will be given off. That's it. Or your hydrogen will be discharged and hence given off because you have H plus, H plus everywhere. Your chloride is concentrated. So it's going to be discharged. Okay, it's going to be discharged as your chlorine gas. So B is also wrong. Dilute aqueous sodium chloride. What are the electrolytes? You have Na plus, 
chloride negative versus still water. So what will be discharged? Your sodium and hydrogen will move to the cathode, but your hydrogen will be discharged. This is less reactive. So you have hydrogen gas. Your chloride and your hydroxide will move to the anode, but your hydroxide will be discharged. Will be discharged, right? Your hydroxide will be discharged, and your chloride is also less dilute. It's, it's actually dilute, it's not concentrated. So your hydroxide will be discharged and oxygen gas will be given off. So C is the best choice here. Let's also look at uh, potassium oxide, the molten form of potassium oxide. Since it's molten, it's just the ions present there. You have potassium will be discharged and uh, the oxygen gas also here. So this one is also wrong. So the best choice there is C. Question 11, concentrated aqueous copper to sulfate is electrolyzed using copper electrodes. Which ionic half equation describes the reaction taking place at the cathode? Which ionic half equation? The cathode, take note, uh, reduction takes place here. Redu and what comes to the cathode? Your copper two ions. Your copper two ions comes to the cathode. Since it's reduction, they gain electrons and they form your copper. Okay, so they form your copper. A is wrong, B is wrong, C is rather uh, oxidation taking place. So your D is your right answer. When powdered sodium carbonate and aqueous ethanoic acid are mixed, the temperature of the mixture falls. If the temperature falls, it means it is endothermic, thank you. Endothermic, the reaction is endothermic and the enthalpy change is positive. The enthalpy change is positive. The reaction is endothermic, true. Enthalpy change is negative, wrong. Reaction is endothermic, very correct. Enthalpy change is positive. B is the best choice. Question 13, magnesium powder reacts with, with an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas. Which statements about this reaction are correct? Which statements about these reactions are correct? The smaller the particles of magnesium powder, the more slowly. No, here if this, the particles are reducing in size, it means surface area is, is increasing. So the surface area increases, that makes the reaction to be faster. So this is wrong. The higher the temperature, the faster the magnesium powder disappears. Very true because uh, the particles gain more energy, okay? Particles gain more energy here. The lower the concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid, the faster the rate, rather the, 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 the rate becomes slow, okay, slower. So the slower the rate. The faster the magnesium powder disappears, the faster the rate of the reaction. That's very true. So you have two and four. So the best choice is two and four. Question 14, the reaction between two aqueous compounds, X and Y is slow and exothermic. The graph shows how the rate of this reaction changes with time. A student suggests that the rate of reaction decreases with time because the activation energy decreases. The activation energy decreases. If the activation energy decreases, it means that it means that more particles will meet up that activation energy and the collision will be successful. So the rate will increase. Okay, so the statement is wrong. The speed of the molecules of X and Y decreases. No, that's not a good reason. 
the the concentration of both X and Y decreases with time, definitely because the particles will be reacting. Okay, when the particles are reacting to form the products, so their concentration is decreasing. So we move to D only or D as three only. Hydrogen reacts with iodine to form hydrogen iodide. We have this reaction. We have hydrogen. Which statements explain why the reaction is faster when the pressure is increased at constant temperature? When you increase the pressure, when the pressure increases, remember pressure, okay. When the pressure increases, the volume decreases, right? Pressure is, you know, inversely proportional to what? Volume. Is that okay? It's inversely proportional to the volume. So when the pressure increases, the volume decreases. And when the volume decreases, the concentration increases. Concentration increases. I can just abbreviate my con. The concentration increases. Remember concentration, which is equals to or uh, the moles over volume. So the concentration increases, all right? And when the concentration increases, the particles, you have what, more reacting particles and you also have more collisions. So let's see, at higher pressure, the molecules are moving faster. That's not a good reason. At higher pressure, more of the molecules have the required activation energy. This was true for increasing temperature. At higher pressure, the molecules are closer together, of course, because the volume decreases. The volume decreases, that's true. And at higher pressure, the molecules collide more often. We said also true. So three and four are correct. The molecules collide more often because of what increase in concentration, since you have what a decrease in the volume. So three and four is correct. Ammonium sulfate is used as a fertilizer. It is named from ammonia and sulfuric acid. The dash is made by the dash process, which Dash is used as a catalyst. Ammonia is made from the contact process. No, that's the harbor process. Ammonia is made from the harbor process. Very true, but you have iron here, so that's not true. Sulfuric acid from the contact process, true. Vanadium 5 oxide, true. So C is the best choice. Question 17. The reversible reaction shown takes place in a closed system at constant temperature. When the reaction has reached equilibrium, more tea is added. Now, when you add more tea here, for example, if you add more tea here, what do you think will happen? When we add more tea, the equilibrium will shift to the left and you have more production of P, Q, and R, as when you do increase in concentration of one of the reactants. After the addition of T, which other substances increase in concentration? P, Q, R, and S? No. Just these three. P and Q? No. P, Q, and R? Definitely. C is a choice. In which equation is the underlying substance acting as a reducing agent? The reducing agent here, just looking at them, will be the one that removes oxygen from another substance or another compound. So which one here does that? Carbon monoxide reacting with ion three oxides. You see there's no more oxygen in ion. So Carbon monoxide is the reducing agent. 
Let's look at carbon dioxide plus carbon gives you carbon monoxide. You now you see that uh, ox carbon dioxide is like oxidizing this carbon to give carbon monoxide. So this is wrong. Copper oxides, you know, oxygen has been added to your hydrogen to give you water. So this copper oxide is acting as an oxidizing agent. Sorry, so it's wrong. And your calcium oxide as well, reacting with water to give you, you see the, the, the number of oxygen on your water has increased. So this is also not a reductant. Calcium oxide is also not a reductant. Question 19, an aqueous solution reacts with a solid. An aqueous solution reacts with a solid. The products are alkaline gas, a salt, and water. What are the aqueous solution and the solid? Okay. Um, when alkaline, the only alkaline gas that we know is ammonia. The only alkaline gas that we know is ammonia. And for a substance to produce, for two reactants to react and produce ammonia and a salt, then an ammonium salt should be involved. An ammonium salt. So that solid is an ammonium salt. Is the solid. And that ammonium salt should react with an alkali. When you check on the reaction of alkalis, okay, check on the reaction of alkalis with ammonium salt, you will find out that ammonia gas is released. So let's check. Sodium hydroxide, there is no. Hydrochloric acid as AK solution, rather not. And sodium hydroxide, yes, ammonium chloride, that's an ammonium salt. So D is the best choice. Butanoic acid partially dissociates in aqueous solution. Which rule about butanoic acid is correct? It is an acid. Effect on thermophthalene turns blue? No, it rather turns it colorless. Rather turns it colorless. Then what about B? You have acidic, that's true, of course, so weak acid, so the pH is, can be about five, turns colorless, that's true, so B is the best choice. So, yeah, butanoic acid are neither, it's not a base, so we cannot go to eight and 10, pH eight and 10. Question 21, copper to sulfate is prepared by adding excess copper to carbonate to sulfuric acid. Why is an excess of Copper to carbonate added so that all of the acids should react to ensure all the sulfuric acid has reacted. C is the best choice. Someone is calling me. B is the best choice. B. B. We usually add one of, or we usually add, when well, we have two reactants, reactant A and B, if you put more of reactant A, then you want reactant B to completely react. Which element has two? Oh, are we there? Okay, you have the periodic, you have the periodic table here. Which element has two electrons in its outer shell and three electron shells? Three electron shells. So you know that. Now with electron shells, you can determine that using the period. Um two electrons in its outermost shell goes for the group. Right. So this is group one, this is group two. But this is period one of here. All these elements of here are period one. This is period two, this is period three. So we want three electron shells, so that should be period three. So it's likely C and D, but 
you're told that that element should have two electrons in its outermost shell. This has six electrons, and this has two electrons, so we go to group two. So we can erase D. So C is the best choice. Oh, I can see it is. Question 23. Elements in group one and group two show the same trends in their reactions with water and in their density. Which row shows how the properties of barium compare with calcium? Now, barium reacts faster with water compared to uh, compared to calcium. Barium, okay. As you go down the group, just like in group one, you go down the group, the reaction with water or the reaction of these metals, one and two metals with water increases, right? Reaction increases. So it should be faster with water. Now with density, with density or uh, going, generally going down the group, generally going down the group, the density increases. The density increases. Sometimes you, you can find some abnormalities. I don't want to discuss it here. You will see that in the AS. You'll find some abnormalities, but generally the density increases. So the density of, of barium is kind of larger than that in calcium. So we go to A. Which pair of compounds shows a transition element in two different oxidation states? All you need to do is identify the oxidation states of each of these uh, transition metals. So this is chromium three oxide, so you can put my three here. And this is also chromium three sulfate, so you can, remember there's an exchange of valences, okay? There'll be an ex exchange of valences. So there's a three here. So this is also three. Copper two oxides, oh no, this is not copper two oxide, it's copper one oxide. You wanna see? So if the valency here is two and uh, here should be one, when you, you're gonna have copper one oxide. So this is copper one oxide, here one, but this is copper two carbonate, copper two carbonate because remember your carbonate is, so it should have a valency of two. And for you to have this formula, then the valency of copper should be two. So this is two here. So just doing B, you know that this the answer is B because copper, the valency of copper here is one, but in copper two, uh, copper two carbonate, the valency of copper is two. So here is just two, two. And here, this is nickel two oxide. And this is also nickel two oxide. So B is the right choice. Which description of brass is correct? Is brass a compound? No, brass is a mixture. So brass is an alloy, and alloys are mixtures. So that's a mixture, but brass consists of copper and zinc. So C is the right answer. Question 26, which, what is the symbol of the metal used in the manufacture of aircraft because of its low density? That's an easy one. That's aluminum, aluminum has a low density. Which substances react to form hydrogen gas? Which of these substances react to form your hydrogen gas? One, calcium and water, you have your, your hydrogen gas here. So you can, you can start to put down the equations, right? Calcium plus, remember the metals, except the less reactive metals, react with water to give you an alkaline solution and, oh, uh, Oh, for an alkaline solution, you can talk about the group one or two metals. Okay, some group one or two metals. Yeah. So they give you alkalines or they give you what? 
they, they're going to give you the oxide and the hydroxide with your hydrogen. So calcium plus water, for example, gives you calcium hydroxide, or uh, is two here, plus a hydrogen gas. So this is slightly alkaline. Slightly alkaline. Silver and dilute hydrochloric acid, there'll be no reaction here because silver is less, rea uh, less reactive. Magnesium and steam. Now, magnesium and steam gives you uh, you're going to have magnesium oxide, okay? You're going to have magnesium oxide plus a hydrogen. Plus a hydrogen. So that's what we are going to obtain. You could also obtain, uh, you could also obtain the hydroxide. You could also obtain, let me change my pen here. Now, let me go to this. You could also obtain magnesium hydroxide. Okay, aqueous. This is solid. You could also obtain magnesium hydroxide, but it is weakly alkaline, weakly alkaline. And if this is the product, then you're supposed to use cold water here, okay? Cold water. You see this in AS as well. It's AS knowledge. Yeah. But generally, hydrogen is giving off. Hydrogen is giving off. So we go to our blue pen. So we have this reacts. This does not react. Three reacts. Zinc and hydrochloric acid will also react. Okay. Giving you the salt and hydrogen gas. So question of you have one, three, and four. A is the best choice. 28, coke and limestone are two raw materials used in extraction of iron from hematite. Which type of reaction occurs when each substance is heated during the process? Now, when you heat coke, you're going, to, you're going to have a redox reaction. Limestone, you will not have. It rather breaks. That's thermal decomposition. B. Some combustion reactions produce pollutant gases. Some combustion reactions, you have pollutant gases. Which reactions produce a pollutant gas that is not present in clean air? Now, this is a pollutant. One produces carbon monoxide. You don't have carbon monoxide in clean air. Two, we have steam here. You can have what? If this is steam, actually, you can have it in clean air. So two is not going to go. You could also have carbon monoxide in, or carbon dioxide in clean air. You could have carbon dioxide in clean air. So... We don't want that, remember, not present. And you could also have, you could have uh, oxide of nitrogen in clean air. That's a pollutant as well. So one and four, one and four, we go to B. So carbon monoxide and uh, nitrogen monoxide are present in your clean air. So one and four is the best choice. Question 30. One mole of arcane Y produces 72 dm cube of carbon dioxide when burned in excess oxygen, measured at room temperature and pressure. What is Y? What is Y? So I can put down my arcane here, plus excess oxygen gives you carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, carbon dioxide plus your water. Now, what is Y? You told her one more, so this should be one more. That should be one more. To solve this question, uh, we, we, we just concentrate on carbon dioxide, the volumes of carbon dioxide produced. Okay, the volumes. So for you to produce one mole of uh, 
let's say 24 what? 24 dm cube of carbon dioxide is produced by what? One mole. Right? So 72 dm cube now will produce how many moles of carbon dioxide? So your x will be 72 times 1 divided by 24, and that gives you 3 moles. So it means that one mole of that alkane produced three moles of carbon dioxide. And we have, and if we have three moles of carbon dioxide, then there were three what? Carbon atoms, three carbon atoms. And if you have three carbon atoms, then it should be an alkane with three carbon atoms, which is six, eight, as a propane. Does that make sense? Is that okay? That's a propane. Thirty one. The structure of organic compound X is shown. What is X? That's an ester. That's an ester. Take note. And to name this ester. This is one carbon, so that should be a methyl. And this is an ethanoid, that's two carbon atom. So it should be what? Methyl ethanoid, methyl ethanoid, C, right? Check it out. That's a methyl one to ethanoid. Question 32, what is the structural formula of the compound form in the addition reaction of propene with bromine? Propene with bromine. Now, if I don't know, if these choices are confusing, I will rather put my display of propene. Bromine. Now I will have right, that's an addition reaction. So I'll put my halogens here. Now the bromine atoms will add across uh, the double bond carbon atoms. Okay. That's it. That's my product. One, two, di, one, two, di, bromo, propane. So how will I deduce my structural formula from here? So I just need this. This carbon atom has three hydrogen atoms. And this one has CH bromine, and this is CH2 bromine. So I come, which one suits or which one ties best? We have a ties best, you can see that. Yeah, you have no, it doesn't add on this. So this is wrong. What about C? So you see, choose a bromine as on this carbon atoms, all the bromine molecules add on this, or all the bromine atoms. Two bromine atoms add on this carbon atom behind it, which is not correct. And with this other one, no. So all these are not correct. So A is the best choice. Question 33, ethanol is produced industrially by fermentation and also by catalyzed addition reaction involving steam. Which role describes one advantage of each process? Fermentation uses renewable materials, that's true. So it's not, it's a slow process rather. It's a, con it's, it's a continuous process, yes. So it's continuous, at least that saves time. So it's an advantage. It requires little energy, is that true? The one with steam, does it require a little energy? No, I don't think so. Remember, it has a temperature of about 300 degrees centigrade. Centigrade, okay? Besides, it also uses what? Steam, moreover, it uses steam. So the best choice is A. 
34, carboxylic acid react with alcohols when warm with an acid catalyst. Which type of substance is formed in this reaction? Carboxylic acid and uh, alcohols, you have an ester. You have an ester. 35, nylon is formed by condensation polymerization, nylon. For your nylon, your nylon should look like this. Your nylon should look like this. The monomers should be a uh, bifunctional. Or you can have it should be bifunctional and identical. If you have one monomer like this, the other monomer should be. And I mean, this, are the, this, this is how the monomers of uh, 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 nylon look like, okay? It's in monomers. And when they form a bond, you're going to have an amide linkage. You have an amide linkage, so you can have this. So that's an amide linkage. That's an amide. So what about this? Here, uh, the functional groups are bifunctional but unidentical, so it's wrong. Yeah. What about B? So you have this bond, which is not correct. That's not an amide linkage. You could have this. You see, the, 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 the monomers are bifunctional, and you have your amide linkage, which makes sense. That's an amide linkage. Try to look at these other ones. Yeah. Always look across because sometimes they can put one correct and they mix you up on the second uh, amide bond. So C is the best answer. Let's go to D. Now this one, you could have a funny kind of bond. Here is like an ester bond. It's like an ester bond, but you have addition of nitrogen there, which doesn't make sense. So C is the right answer. Question 36. Which structure represents the repeat unit of the addition polymer form from but one in? Now, how does but one in look like? I'll put my double bond. If this is two carbon atoms, then I should have an ethyl here. So one, two, three, four. That's but one in. So the best polymer there should be A because of this and this. You notice that. Two point zero zero grams of powdered calcium carbonate is added to fifty cm cube of hydrochloric acid. Which apparatus is used to measure these quantities of calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid so we have uh, what do we have here you need a balance right you need a balance to measure the powder so i have my balance here and for the acid you need a burette to get volume is that okay you need a burette to get the volume so a so a is the best choice a is the best choice. You don't need a pipe, so you need a balance and a burette to get it for you. Question 38. The diagram shows a chromatogram obtained from the colors of three different suites, X, Y, Z. How many different red dyes are present in the suites? How many different red dyes? Okay, now I'm going to look at all the red dyes. I have a red dye here, I have a red dye here, but they have the same what? They have the same RF. How do I write this RF again? Forgotten? Is it like this? RF, right? So they have the same RF. I have another red dye here and another one here, so still same RF. How many different red dyes? So actually, you have just two red dyes, okay? Two, because 
of what the same RF. So two red dice. See another one? No. Two. A mixture contains sand and an aqueous solution of sodium chloride. An aqueous solution of sodium chloride. Which processes are used to obtain a sample of solid sand and a sample of solid sodium chloride from the mixture? Now, if I have sand and aqueous sodium chloride, the first thing is that I'll remove this guy by filtration. Next, I'll do what here, just crystallize, right? Crystallize or evaporate to dryness. That's it. So crystallization followed? No, we start with filtration. Evaporation followed by? No. Filtration followed by crystallization. I think C is the best choice here. Question 40, a student tests an unknown compound M. The compound produces a lilac flame using a flame test. Lilac should be potassium ion. Produces a gas which turns lime water cloudy. That gas should be carbon dioxide. When dilute hydrochloric acid is added. So if you add hydrochloric acid, then a carbonate was involved. So the compound is potassium carbonate. D. Okay, students, that's that for that uh, paper. Thank you so much for your time.